Stay tuned because today I have a new pattern review for you in a wonderful pattern that is now in extended sizes up to size 40. This is exciting news. Welcome to Sojourns. Let's journey into sewing. Hi everybody. Welcome back to the sewing room. I'm Chris from the sewing blog Sojourns.com. Today I have a pattern review for you. I'm really excited about this because this pattern I've waited for. I've waited for it to come into my size. Mountain View Pull-On Jeans by Itch to Stitch Patterns. Very popular pattern for her and I'll tell you why and you're going to see why because it's really exceptional. She has now ventured in to extended sizes. This is the first pattern and I know she'll be drafting more in extended sizes so yay for the plus size curvy community. We're really excited about this. I love the patterns from Itch to Stitch and right here I have the Nottingham top this is my sweater that I wear, and you'll see I've modeled it with the new pants. It has this really cool knot here, and the way it's designed is it's brilliant. It's just beautiful. Fit into their size zero to 20 in their tops. This is the 18 or the 20, but I needed an additional size for the pants, and now we can all have them. So let's get into it. So like I said, these are the Mountain View pull-on jeans in sizes now from 0 to 40. This new pattern, which is released today, will include all of those sizes. So there's no need to buy two patterns if your waist falls into one size and your hips into another, as mine does. And if you have many people you sew for, and some are in the size original size range and some are in the extended size range, you still only need to purchase one pattern. So Kenneth from Itch to Stitch has really thought about us. This pattern is on sale from August 3rd until August 9th for 20% off, $9.60. And down below in the description box, I have the link to this pattern. I also have any information that you need. I'll have a link to the Nottingham top, which is gorgeous. The Mountain View pull-on jeans are for stretch denim. 20 to 30 percent stretch. Word of caution here, don't try to use this pattern with regular non-stretch denim. There is negative ease in the hips, which means that the actual pants will be smaller than your hips because we do have a 20 to 30 percent stretch denim. So that stretch will accommodate, hug your curves nicely like it should, and these are going to look and feel fabulous. They have a mid-rise and then a nice taller waistband that really gives some tummy control and when you use your stretch denim with the correct stretch you can use your same fabric so here you go they look fantastic and if you don't tuck your shirt in I won't tell nobody will know that this is a stretch denim waistband. It has a faux fly with gorgeous top stitching the top stitching on this pattern really makes the pattern look like your regular zipper fly jeans. Let me get out my pair here and show you. These are mine. Here we have the waistband, the stretch denim waistband. It also has a very small, I think I used 3 8 of an inch elastic at the top of the waist. And that's terrific because it stays close to your waist and it stays right where you want it. It's very smooth under your clothes. Here's the faux fly with the top stitching, which really looks professional. Keep watching for today's So You Can Tip all about top stitching. There's a back yoke. That really provides some nice shaping. I love a back yoke. And then the pockets. Also, this pattern has a two-piece leg. And that really provides some beautiful shaping as well as some edge stitching right down the leg. I did the single line of edge stitching. You can do double, so it would be edge stitching, which is an eighth of an inch 
in from the seam and then top stitching, which would be a quarter of an inch. But I just did the one row of stitching, but that's up to you. You can customize your Mountain View pull on jeans the way you like them. Pattern has gorgeous pockets. These pockets were a new construction for me, and I tell you, I'm hooked. I don't want to do them any other way. The pockets are constructed from a lighter weight cotton woven fabric. Here's mine here, I'll show you. That's cotton quilting fabric. And then there's a yoke pattern piece here in the same denim, so that when you're wearing or looking at your jeans, it's all one look, all one fabric. So let me take you through my personal fit adjustments for this pattern. This gray denim was my test version. I tested these and it was fantastic to test these. I have never had such a, an enjoyable experience testing a pattern before. And I do a lot of pattern tests because it is the most professional pattern drafting I've had the privilege of testing. We only had one version, which is phenomenal. Sometimes you go through two or three or four versions during testing, but they were so well drafted. The rise, the front rise and the back rise are given to you in the size chart. So all you have to do is measure your rise against the pattern before you even begin. And then you'll know if you need to make a length adjustment there. On my muslin, when I measured the rise against the pattern, I knew that I needed to increase this back rise by a half inch because it was a half inch shorter than my personal rise. And here is how I made that adjustment. I took the pattern and I slashed it through the crotch curve about a third of the way up and I spread the pattern a half inch put some paper behind it, taped it back together, and then I used my curve hip ruler to smooth out the crotch curve. When you do this adjustment, mark your seam allowance all around the side seam. When you draw your line and slash through it, you're going to slash through that line up to but not through the side seam so that you can create a hinge. And you'll see that in the picture. You can create a hinge so that you're not changing that side seam length at all. So it will match up to your other pattern pieces. And I've got that increased rise. So that's what I did for these. That is the only adjustment I made on these. And this is a great fit for a muslin, you'll see here. So what I saw when I did this muslin was that I needed to also lengthen the crotch point. And how you'll know if you need to lengthen the crotch point is the fabric may be pulling in towards the inner, inner thighs, trying to make a little more room for the inner thighs. And also there's a distinct definition in the buttocks. And what you really want it to do is skim past there. When you make a change to the crotch point, it's a very small change. You want to do that in small increments. So in order to do that, I did the slash and spread method again. So about two inches in from the crotch point, I slashed down the pattern about two or three inches till I hit the seam allowance. I spread that, believe my adjustment was three eighths of an inch. So do this in small increments if you wanna do it. And you'll see on my finished pair that that adjustment was perfect. And it really gave my inner thigh the room it needed and the back really comes beautifully down the way it's supposed to. The only other adjustment I made was for length. So at the shortened length in line, I took off a half inch. And since these jeans are straight leg jean from the knees down, I knew that I could take any additional length off the bottom without changing the proportion. There's also a little instruction in the tutorial. If you prefer a skinny leg jean, you can just widen, take a longer 
bigger seam allowance from the knee down to get a skinny look or a thinner leg if you know whatever you prefer make sure you choose your size by the size chart don't go by your ready to wear size go by the size chart to measure your waist tie a string around your waist because that will find the thinnest part of your waist and that's your natural waist and use that to choose your waistband size. And then your hips. Your hips are measured around the fullest part of your tummy and your hips here, which is just above where you bend. A lot of people will measure their hip around their navel and that's actually a high hip measurement. So use the measurement here. Now I fall into two separate sizes. So I chose the size 22 waistband because that's where the new pattern that we tested started. I could actually use the 20. And now that we're gonna get all the sizes, I can go to the 20. All I did was adjust that top elastic a little bit to give it the fit I wanted and it fits beautifully. And then I chose a 24 for my hips. So I took my waistband and I just took the 24 at the bottom because it's a contoured waistband which means that it'll be wider at the bottom to fit the circumference of the pants without the waistband and then it will come up to the smallest part of your waist and all I did was blend that size 24 hip so it will match the jeans up to the 22 it's just a little bit of a curve I again used my curve ruler to do that simple adjustment it fit perfectly. I highly recommend the Mountain View pull-on jeans all the way up from a size 0 to 40 is included in the pattern. So for today's So You Can tip, I'm going to talk a little bit about top stitching so you can get gorgeous top stitching. The top stitching really makes these faux fly pull-on jeans look like your regular zipper fly jeans. In today's So You Can tip, we're gonna talk all about top stitching, what you need to be really successful. For top stitching, some of the sewing tools that will really help you be successful are first, a walking foot. This is a walking foot. This foot attaches to your regular sewing machine and it acts similar to what a serger does with that second set of feed dogs. So this acts like a second set of feed dogs and it evenly pulls both your top and bottom layer through so that everything is even and neat. This part of your walking foot attaches to the needle bar and your needle goes right through that opening. Next, you'll want to use top stitch needles. Top stitch needles are very particular for top stitching. Top stitching thread is thicker. So these needles have a larger eye, a larger opening to accommodate the thicker thread. They also are pointier and sharper so that they can go through those seams because you usually have a thicker seam when you're top stitching. And they have a stronger shaft. This will make your top stitching more even You'll also want some top stitching thread. Now the top stitching thread only goes through the needle. You'll use regular polyester thread in your bobbin. This is much too thick for your bobbin and it's only in the inside of your garment. This is a, the typical color that you'll see on denim, on deep blue denim jeans for top stitching. This top stitching thread is by Coates and Clark, I believe. I actually prefer Guterman top stitching thread and I purchase mine on Wawak. Comes in different colors. And this is also a top stitching or jeans thread and this is black. This is the one I used on my gray muslin. You can see, I think, that it's much thicker and that's why you'll want that top stitching needle. When I top stitch, I lengthen my stitch length to about three, three and a half. You can do a test garment and see what you prefer. So you have your top stitching thread and I always buy two of the color that I need because you are using a longer stitch length. 
And so sometimes you'll go through more thread. I had one spool of the thread that I used from Guterman and I had very little left. So if you have to do some seam ripping or you wanna do a double top stitching, make sure you purchase at least two. Top stitching thread, regular thread in the bobbin. Your walking foot will be really helpful and your top stitching needle. You're all set to have a fabulous pair of Mountain View pull-on jeans. Remember, always do a muslin first. I did my muslin in knee-length shorts. You don't need to do it from the knees down for a muslin. You can save some fabric because these are straight leg jeans from the knees down. This muslin fits so well. I did make those minor adjustments, but these fit so well. I used black top stitching thread. So I ended up hemming them with the same top stitching thread and now I have knee length walking shorts that I love. And you know, stretch denim comes in some beautiful colors now. So right now I have my medium blue and I have my gray. My next pair, I'll have black ones for the fall coming up. I'm excited about that. I've even seen some gorgeous plum or purple stretch denim. You can get printed denim now. You can have as many pair as you like. They're comfortable. You can sit and feel comfortable. Have a gorgeous shirt on underneath. The Nottingham top goes gorgeous with these. And you can make your own jeans. I know you can. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. The link to the Mountain View pull-on jeans is right below me in the description box. I also have one other thing I want to tell you that's special. I've been doing a series on my top five favorite PDF patterns. I'm going to link those in the description box for you because I am giving away one of each of those top five patterns and there's still a week left for the contest and I don't want you to miss it. So check out the description box, go to those, each part one through five. You can only win one pattern, but you may comment on each of the five. That'll increase your chances. And that pattern goes, I believe, excuse me, that contest goes until August 6th, I believe. And then after that, I will choose a winner. Thanks for joining me in the sewing room today. I hope you love your Mountain View pull-on jeans by Itch to Stitch. I know I do, and I'm excited. I've been waiting for this pattern to be released in my size. So go and enjoy it. I can't wait to see all of your Mountain View pull-on jeans. And please tag me on social media at Sojourns. In the description box, you can see how we can connect. I would love to see yours. I'll see you next time on Sojourns.